I've never been much of a fan of the Guardian, up until recently. I think historically this was just one of those ships that when I first got it, it looked a little bit too weird, a little bit too angular, and visually didn't really impress me. There were some problems I had early on with a couple of the variants of it, and it just never really stood out. I love frigates and destroyers, I build entire fleets out of frigates and destroyers, even before the recent buff to them, they're pretty much the ships that I focus on throughout most of my time in Infinite Lagrange, basically until we hit radiation zones and I have to skill out of them and start building other things, they're what I use. But in today's Blueprint Breakdown video, we're going to be taking a look at the Guardian, because at long last I have all three variants of it, and I actually think this ship now is really worth talking about. So, if you enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, otherwise, let's jump right in. So the Guardian is an Antonius Consortium Destroyer, and it's a bit of an interesting one. The first type that you unlock is the Guardian Support Destroyer, the Support Type. And ultimately, this isn't a terrible ship. Let's be frank, support type ships are in short supply. They're the kind of thing you do really want to get at least one of. And if the Guardian is your first one, well, at least it's a support ship. That means you can heal up some of your friendly ships, and it's not entirely terrible. Okay, if I'm being completely honest here, it's not entirely terrible, but it is massively outclassed by the alternatives. The Guardian Support Destroyer, if we look at the bottom left here, you can see that it can only carry one repair UAV. If we compare that to the Tundra Support, for example, that's one repair UAV, but with bigger bonuses on its upgrades. If we look at the Series Support, the Series Support is using two repair UAVs, both with very big upgrades. This is the king of healers. And if we were to go down into Frigates, that's fighters, if we were to go down into frigates and have a look at the Noma M470 support type, again, that's one repair UAV with better bonuses than the uh, than the Guardian gets, and on a significantly cheaper to build and cheaper command point ship that's also arguably harder to hit. So what really is the purpose of the Guardian? Well, it may not be the best healer out there, but between all of the different support ships, it certainly packs the largest punch, which makes it just that little bit more versatile, because while it's healing ships, it's also dealing more damage than other healers would. So if you're looking at comparing this to the series support or the tundra support, the closest in tonnage and command points, then both of those are going to heal more. The tundra will heal more, the series will he heal most, but the Guardian does somewhat okay healing with a lot of additional firepower behind it as well. Let's have a look at its upgrades. So if we go into the UAV support system first of all, we get that repair UAV of one, followed by an aerial denial anti-aircraft UAV, just like the Tundra has. When we look at its abilities, we've got Emergency Repairs, which is when the ship falls to 20%, all its onboard UAVs perform self-repair and increases repair effectiveness by 100% for 40 seconds, only triggering once per battle. This is essentially designed that if the Guardian starts taking severe damage, then it's going to pull all of its uh, UAVs back to itself in order to repair itself. And it is worth noting that this is a middle row ship. It's not a front row ship, but it may take damage fairly early into the fight if you don't have good front row support. Now, I'm of the opinion that if, you, uh, if you're using a support ship like this, you should have good front row support in the fleet. The emergency repairs, I've said it for the Tundra, I've said it for the series, I don't really rate this unless you're going up against massively overwhelming firepower. You can usually do better with the other enhancements, and we only get five enhancement slots to work with here. So, target lock-on speed of the UAVs, it's a fairly nice one to get them out there, lock-on nice and quickly. Same with the RTB cooldown, always useful there to get out, lock on to things, and start actually healing. Ultimately for me, when I'm upgrading this one, when I've used it in the past, I tend to go for the RTB and the lock-on speed ones first, of which there are uh, two of each, I believe. Two RTBs and two lock-on speeds, and that's a hit rate. No, actually hit by guided weapons, there we are, RTB cooldown. So it's three RTBs and one of the lock-on speed ones. Go for those first so that when those UAVs uh, undock, they lock on quickly and start applying their healing that little bit faster. 
Now, of course, that's just four. You do have a fifth upgrade. I usually go for the reduce the chance of being hit by guided weapons for the simple fact that, well, it just reduces the damage being taken and thus the likelihood of healing. I have used the hit rate one before um, to see if the UAVs, uh, the anti-aircraft ones, did a little bit better. There still seems to be bugs with anti-aircraft UAVs and anti-aircraft defenses and things. Um, so hopefully Netties will eventually get around to fixing that. Or maybe I'm just doing something massively wrong. If you do go all the way up, you, I suppose, could go for the emergency repairs. I just don't really see the need of things. I think that your fleet should be better constructed to avoid the necessity of ever using this one. Because when it uses this one, then anything else that's being shot at suddenly has its healing withdrawn, and that can cause major problems in the middle of a firefight. Now, as I mentioned, there's more to the uh, the Guardian than just its UAVs. We do have a situational support, which reduces the hit rate from enemy missiles, and we can reduce by guided weapons and direct fire weapons as well there, which makes this actually a little bit more survivable than perhaps the Tundra or the series can be. Certainly on the top, uh, topic of survivability, our armor isn't terrible. 20 armor points followed by 23,490 HP. It's fairly tanky, like it's not a Taurus or anything, but it kind of, is. it takes a few hits. I don't think upgrading the armor is what you need to be doing here. I genuinely think a good frontliner is much more important. Propulsion system, also pretty dull. They are quite slow ships, so it's worth sort of occasionally thinking of that if you need your fleet to move faster. But for the most part, you're going to go for the UAV support system first of all, and then follow that up with the Storm missile system. This is a missile launching nest prioritized against aircraft, but it does also fight against destroyers and frigates. It has somewhat decent damage to it. Um, this, obviously, you can build around its anti-aircraft support. You've got five slots again to work with. I often just go for the straight missile torpedo damage, weapon system cooldown for two, and then add the hit rate of this one here. I don't tend to worry about the anti-aircraft support or the aiming mechanism. I just kind of go for the full damage because when there's aircraft around, that just clears them quickly. If there's no aircraft, then it's more damage against the enemy fleet. And it's not terrible damage on this ship. I mean, you can see there, um, it, oh, I need to go back into the weapon system. You can see there, 2,490 isn't atrocious for a, uh, a support destroyer. And that does give it a little bit of versatility there. Honestly, to me, it is the weakest of all the support ships. For nine command points, I would rather go for literally either the Tundra or the Ceres. The Ceres is cheaper at eight command points. It is the king of support. The Tundra support at nine, it's a bit more expensive. It still pulls out better than the Guardian for equal points, just lower damage output. But heck, if you're really in a pinch, just go for the Noma M470 support. You can get more of them for your command points, um, and that just results in more healing overall, which is obviously a good thing. Now, the second type for the Guardian is the dual purpose type. And up until recently, this one was getting some use. This launches twin Corvettes. It has two Corvettes that it can carry, um, which is really, really useful at this point in the game. If we have a look at that Corvette maintenance system, two Corvettes can be carried, and we've got increases here to the damage of the aircraft, hit rate, missile evasion, damage again, and RTB cooldown. Now, in these situations, RTB is always the one I go for first, usually followed by uh, the time it's out there, like its lock-on speed, things like that. Get the ships out there as quick as possible is my usual priority when it comes to any form of carrier, then follow up with damage. Now, the trouble with the Guardian, if I'm being completely honest here, is that you probably already have an aircraft type AC721, and that itself has the ability to launch two Corvettes. Let's have a look at that one, tap on the right thing, carries two Corvettes. Now, it's got fewer upgrades, perhaps, but they are pretty good still, and you're looking here at eight command points rather than the Guardian's nine. And honestly, whilst the dual purpose type I think does come ahead a little bit on this, I think because you've got that Corvette maintenance system there, still only four of the upgrades, but the damage and that does work out slightly higher. The Guardian itself has slightly better stats than the AC721, but I'm not sure that's all worth that additional command point, because 10 of these is 90 points, 10 AC721s is only 80 points. It's a massive 10 point difference at a full fleet size, and that really makes yeah, that's 10 extra points that you can work with. Two additional ships at frigate level if you wanted. That's two extra Mari Serenitatis, for example. 
I'm not entirely convinced by the Guardian. I enjoyed using it, and again, it has decent damage output with that Storm Missile system. Nothing crazy, it's mainly anti-air, but with destroyers and frigates, you can pump it up quite high with all those missile torpedo damage, weapon system cooldowns, hit rates, this kind of thing here. And it does have the ability to prioritize carriers. I really don't get this one. That's You're doing so little damage, I don't get why you would ever spend five enhancement points on that one, but hey, it's there as an option if you feel it's absolutely necessary. I just think that the Guardian, it's a good, it's a good dual purpose Corvette launcher. It's certainly thematic if you like to have, like me, a full Antonius fleet. I like to build my fleets and theme them around particular of the builders like that. I just honestly think the AC-71 is where it's at when it comes to launching Corvettes. The stats are so comparable and the difference in both its build cost, because this costs more to actually build more in your materials to build it than the AC-721 does. It's going to be harder to unlock this because you need to get the support type first, then unlock the dual purpose type. You've probably already got the AC-721. I just don't really get what the Guardian dual purpose assault ship does extra to the AC-721 in any way that meaningfully counts. It's a rear row ship, so better defenses doesn't really matter either. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not against this as a ship. If you want more carriers, then that's a good way to do it. If you're already maxed out on AC-721s, then the Guardian makes an excellent second position um, in order to fit those roles. So in that case, if you want to do a massive aircraft corvette fleet, then yeah, this is going to be an awesome little blueprint for you. But if you're trying to decide between the AC-721 or the Guardian dual purpose assault ship, I just honestly feel that the Guardian doesn't really take that spot. I think the AC-721 just about pulls ahead thanks to how cheap it is to build and how it costs fewer command points. The third type, however, for the Guardian is where things get absolutely crazy. This is the Guardian Experimental Pulse Assault Ship. I unlocked this yesterday, and this has become one of my new favorite ships. I know I say that about most of the blueprints, it's because I can never really decide which is my favorite, but this is so much fun. It's taken me a long time to unlock it, but my goodness, it has been worth the wait. Let's jump out of this for a moment and just have a look at some of my recent battle stats. Hopefully this is the right one. Yep, that's the one there. Now I've got 10 fully upgraded Reliats. That's uh, the full two, uh, 108 command points and 108, sorry, tech points being used on those at the moment. Stealth type putting out 105.3k damage. That's a lot of damage for 10 little Reliats. But four Pulse Cannon type Guardians are already putting out 66.3. They're putting out more than half of that with like fewer ships. And yes, I know what you're saying, but yes, Benzie, there's, there's 10 frigates against four destroyers. There's, there's going to be a difference in there because of the, uh, the command points there. The Pulse Cannon types there, nine command points times by four is 36, whereas the 10 for the Reliat is 50. So, of course, they're doing an actually damage that's fairly comparable. If I had a couple more Pulse Cannon types to get up to about the 50 points, um, or 45, 45 or 54, whichever one you go for, then I'm going to be equaling out about the Reliats. But it's going to be, you know, fewer ships. Similar command points, but fewer ships for equal DPM. Yeah, until I point out the fact that the stealth types are running on 108 tech points, whereas the uh, the pulse cannon type there is running on 55 tech points. It's insane. And pulse cannons are just so, so good. Pulse cannons have incredibly high hit rate and they deal electromagnetic damage, which means they cut through shields. They deal uh, energy damage, so they cut through shields. And that is just so useful, especially since in the early game, not many enemy ships have high shields, but they do often have good armor. If we have a look then at the Star Codex Pulse Cannon System, which already, come on, who doesn't want to fly a ship that has a Star Codex? A Star Codex Pulse Cannon built into it. Excellent damage here, 7,658, energy shield penetration. It has a chance to disable the target's energy, uh, enemy, energy shield completely as well, which is just so useful. Like the standard uh, pulse laser goes up against shields um, and it's reduced by a percentage of the shield. So if the target's got a 5% shield, your damage gets reduced by 5% and so on and so forth. That's how shields work. Um, ultimately, this is a chance to ship uh, switch shields off completely, which means the rest of your uh, energy weapons, things like, say, your Tauruses, if you're using those as well, then have the possibility to now be shooting at something that has 0% shield. Tell me you're not salivating at that possibility already. 
Damage spread though, destroyer, frigate, carrier, battle cruiser, cruiser. So you do need to clear through destroyers and frigates before it starts shooting at super capitals, but when it starts shooting at them, the fact that it can turn off their shields completely, oh, I can't wait to try that out. I've heard good things, I've been speaking to people recently a lot about this and po folks who have used this have said the same thing. When that happens, it is just an absolute wreck fest because now if you've got a fleet of these and a fleet of Tauruses, heck, build a fleet that is just 10 of these, 10 Taurus offensive and 10 Taurus assault and suddenly you just melt through absolutely everything because these switch off the shields and then the Taurus just rip through everything else. There's also the other one here that has anti-aircraft uh, attack counter-attack as well. Starts with Corvette and fighters then destroys the damage on, uh, joins the fight on destroyers and frigates. Now, in regards to enhancing this, concentrate fire periodically, obviously a very nice one to have here, sinks all weapons in the system with the primary weapon to focus fire on one single target and reduces cooldown by 80% every 90 seconds for 8 seconds. So you've got 8 seconds of 80% reduced cooldown, followed by a uh, 82 second cooldown before this then starts up again. 80% reduced cooldown on the weapons um, for 8 seconds and then 82 seconds again later it'll trigger and keep going. That also means that both of those weapons are going to be firing together. So if the Star Codex is already firing at destroyers or frigates, or heck, it's now decided it's going to start shooting at carriers, then the pulse cannon versions, the smaller versions there, the anti-aircraft ones, are going to lock onto that same target and start applying their damage too. And that just absolutely rips. We then have things like weapon system cooldown there, what I tend to go for first, um, followed by pulse cannon damage. Hit rate isn't overly important on these because pulse cannons have a really good hit rate in general, but ultimately you can see I had one slot left. It was either going to be hit rate against frigates and destroyers or hit rates against fighters and corvettes. So it's going to be the frigates and destroyers one because I want to clear through those first so that I can start shooting at the big ships at the back. I haven't fully upgraded this one yet, but even then we're already looking at 11,943 damage. And again, that's before I've even managed to do the full upgrade here using the weapon blueprints. Both of these are sitting unupgraded at the moment. Whereas again, the Reliat is fully upgraded. So the amount of damage this can kick out is just dirt. We then also have a pulse energy system. You need to keep an eye on this early on because the thing itself is already giving your pulse damage, pulse cannon damages additional 15%, followed by another 10% and 15% uh, cooldown if you're training into these. These are what I would get done first just so you don't forget about them. Oh, the damage this is kicking out is just, it's monstrous, it's monstrous. Propulsion system, nothing to uh, speak home about. It's simple cruising and warp speed. It's a Antonius Consortium destroyer, so it's not particularly nimble. It's not like the uh, Jupiter Industries ones. Um, you might decide that if you want a faster moving fleet, you upgrade that later. I'd probably go for the armor systems before propulsion. Standard ship HP and physical resistance. Again, you are going to be weak to energy weapons yourself. You've only got 2% shields, but having a bit of extra armor against projectile weapons is always going to be quite nice. For me, this is just a no-brainer. I know it only says A-type for the anti-ship capability. I disagree with that. I think this is kicking out some rather insane damage already, and I cannot wait to see that rip apart carriers and battle cruisers later on as well by switching off their shields. That is just so powerful. I mean, as, a, as just as an aside here, let's actually jump up to one of those carriers. Let's have a look at the most shielded carrier, not carrier, sorry, battle cruiser. We'll get there in the end. Having one of those days today, it seems. Let's have a look at the Eternal Storm. Now, the Eternal Storm, if we were to look at its defenses, we've already got some pretty high shielding going on. Where is the armor system? There it is there. 10% shields are standard, which you can then upgrade further using some of its upgrades and enhancements. Let's add on an additional 10% uh, shield there and 10% shield there for 30% shield. That means all energy weapons attacking this have their damage reduced by 30% until along comes your Guardian and just disables that entire system and you're laughing. You're just laughing at that point because all of your energy weapons, all of the energy weapons from the Save the Taurus, if you've built offensive and assault types, the amount of damage they're gonna be kicking out onto that ship now is just monstrous. And if you've got things like IO cruisers, I um, didn't mean to tell you Al Aldabra, if you've got IO cruisers or anything that is dealing like full on laser, uh, laser damage and things like that, ion cannons, you're just gonna rip through them. If you've got your own eternal storm, yeah, 
the damage you can just now deal because they've got no shields. I mean, heck, an Eternal Storm, imagine having an Eternal Storm and having its damage reduced by 30%, only for a Guardian to come along and disable that shield. You're now getting an, all of that damage back to rip through things. Anyway, folks, those are my opinions on the Guardian Support Destroyer, uh, on the Guardian Destroyer. The Support Destroyer, in short, I think is a little bit underwhelming. I think the Dual Purpose type is a little bit underwhelming, but the Pulse Cannon type, oh boy, if this isn't one of my new favourite ships just to throw at things, I don't know what is. There is so much potential in this ship. I'm super excited by it. Let me know your thoughts and opinions though if this is a ship you've been using. I would love to hear what you think about it. Maybe you've faced against them. Um, what do you think about them? Let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise folks, thank you for watching. Happy sailing and see you all in Infinite Lagrange.